Hi guys, Matt from Howtech here, and today I'm going to introduce you to the new Nexus R5 software. Today's video is just an introduction to the Nexus Software Programmer, or NSP for short, and it's aimed at showing you through how to interact with NSP, what's different in NSP versus ESP software, and how to set up NSP to look and feel comfortable for you. Let's start with a look and the feel. Similar to ESP, the first thing you want to do is either load an existing map file, or in this case, I'm going to start a fresh map, so go to File, New, or press Ctrl N. So I want to create a map for a Nexus R5 ECU, and because this is the very first version of NSP, I'm going to select version 1.0.0. As time goes on and updates are made, the version number will increase, and you'll generally select the highest version number available. Now that I've got a map loaded, and I've populated the navigation tree on the left, which shows me what features and functions I've got enabled in the VCU. This is the first area that NSP is different to ESP. No longer is there a main setup window, but rather all of our engine setup information is now contained with the tree structure on the left. Now within the tree structure on the left, each of these headings is called a node. Some nodes have a drop down box, which is indicated by the little triangle box here. If you see a node with a triangle box next to it, the menu structure continues down another level. So let's go to sensors as an example. If I click on the triangular drop down box next to the sensors node, it expands the menu. This is where I find a list of all the sensors I currently have enabled on the device. You'll also notice there's further menu nodes, which means the structure goes deeper. So let's click and expand the air temp sensor node. And you'll see that the setup for the display data units, the diagnostics, and the wiring is found here. If I click through each of these nodes, you'll notice I don't have anywhere to calibrate the air temp sensor. To get to the sensor calibration, rather than clicking on the triangular node drop down arrow, simply click on the air intake temperature label. Now, you might be wondering where the coolant temp sensor is, because it's not showing here in the sensors node. So to add or remove sensors from the system, rather than clicking on the triangular node drop down arrow, click on the sensor node itself and you'll see all the possible functions that you can switch on or off. So here you can see my coolant temp sensor was switched off. I'll click it on and now the sensor is shown in the tree menu structure. Now, if you're the kind of person who wants to see all the available functions within every node, regardless of whether that function is enabled or not, you can actually go into the preferences menu and select show tree nodes from disabled functions. Now, when I go into the sensors node, all of the possible sensors are listed, but you'll notice that sensors that are not currently enabled are grayed out. If I click on a grayed out sensor, I can actually enable it directly from its page by switching the button at the top here. Now the sensor is enabled, I can set the calibration, the display minimum and maximum, and the wiring location. You can also right click on the node, select enable to enable each function. All of the software setup is now done using this node and subnode structure. Now of course, old habits die hard, and many of you will be accustomed to pressing the F4 button to look for the main setup. This shortcut does still exist, and it brings you to the new enable disable functions page, which displays all of the possible functions in the VCU. Now, when you turn any individual function on on this page, you'll notice that function goes from being grayed out to being a hyperlink. Clicking on the function link will take you to the setup node for that function. You use this same process for enabling and disabling maps, corrections, and functions. Now, personally, I think it's a bit cluttered showing all of these nodes in the tree. So I'm gonna go back to the preferences, the navigation tree options, and turn off the show tree nodes for disabled function setting. Now, while we're here in the navigation tree option, if you're like me and your eyesight's getting chronologically challenged, you can now increase the size of the text in the navigation bar to make things easier to read. And for those that communicate only in emojis, you can switch to icon mode, where the text is a thing of the past and your entire navigation tree is now a series of icons. But for me, I'm old, I prefer text. In the preferences menu, you can also change the text size for viewing maps by going into the table view setup and increasing or decreasing the text size. Now, if communicating in emojis is too much, but you do want to modernize the look of the NSP software, I'd suggest changing the visual theme from classic to modern. One thing that you'll notice with my setup here is on the right-hand side of the software, I've got a whole bunch of warnings. Anything that's highlighted in orange is just a warning, which means 
something's probably not right here, you should go and check it out. Now looking through the warnings, I can see that a lot of these warnings are in place because I have maps set up using the coolant temp sensor as an access, and if I go into the sensors node, I've accidentally turned that coolant temp sensor off again. Turning the sensor back on takes care of 15 of those warnings. Now anything that's red is an error, which means the ECU has an incomplete setup. So I can either look at the error and navigate to the appropriate setup node to take care of these, or I can simply click on the hyperlink and the NSP software will take me straight to the affected node. Depending on how complex the installation that you have, you may not want to rummage through all the nodes and maps every time you want to access a certain map or correction or feature. Or, you know, perhaps you've got your calibration dialed in pretty well and you want to access just one or two of the maps all the time. For this reason, you can favorite a map display by finding the map you want to access to, right click on it and select add to favorites. This creates a copy of the table node right up at the top of the tree structure. So I imagine things like base fuel map, ignition map, boost target maps, they'll be in everybody's favorites. Outside of that, it's really up to you how many favorites you have. Now that's a very broad overview of how you navigate your way in and around the new NSB software. But before I sign off, I did want to show you through a couple more things. One of the highly anticipated new functions of the Nexus R5 is wireless communications. To set up wireless comms for programming the VCU and downloading data logs, scroll down to the connections node and turn on Wi-Fi. Now you've got a sub node that allows you to give your Nexus VCU unit a network name and a password to connect to it. With Wi-Fi switched on, the network shows up now on my laptop. I punch in the password and voila, look mum and dad, no hands, or no cables as the case may be. Along with Wi-Fi communications, something new now is with the USB power, you can actually power the ECU up straight from your laptop, only for programming though. When I plug the yellow USB cable in, you notice that the online status symbol goes to yellow, just like the cable. That means we're powered up off the USB port. The Nexus R5 also has a built-in four-channel oscilloscope. Just like a regular oscilloscope, you select the voltage per division scale and the time scale. Unlike a regular oscilloscope, there's no wiring required. Simply select the channel you want to display and the ECU will display the incoming waveform. This is quite a powerful function and we'll be doing more in-depth videos on how to set up and use the onboard scope for different purposes. So if you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, there's no better time to subscribe. So as you're no doubt aware, by now, the Nexus R5 is a lot more than just another ECU. It's a power distribution module capable of switching and supplying high current supply voltages to a number of devices. So let's take a quick look at how to set some of these power distribution functions up. Now the first and most obvious two power distribution functions are powering the fuel system, so the injector power supply and the fuel pump, and also powering up the ignition system, because just about every engine has these two. So let's start with the power supply to the fuel injectors. I go to the engine configuration fuel system wiring here you'll see that I've enabled the injector power output control function and the supply voltage is selected to come from the 25 amp high current output 1 or 25 HCO1. As can be seen here, this is the red blue wire located in connect E position 1. I can change that if I want to by clicking edit, scrolling down to another high current output and selecting a different HCO output. To set up my fuel pump output, I'm not actually quite sure where to find that, so I'm just going to jump up here into the search bar and type in fuel pump. Oh, there it is, of course it is, in the engine functions. So clicking on the fuel pump node, I can now select if I want the pump to just be a regular switched output, but perhaps I want a pulse width modulator the pump so that I'm not running 460 litres per hour worth of fuel all the time. When I do that, you can see I've now got a fuel pump output table where I can control the output on RPM and engine load. Now, as is the case with all of these 12 volt high side outputs, I can select the fuse current in amps. Now this fuse current mimics a regular automotive fuse. So the circuit can and will allow more than this program current to flow through the circuit for a small amount of time. But if the output's continuously having to supply more than the current fuse limit, it will eventually blow. Like I said, in reality, this is exactly how your regular old automotive fuse works. But now you're not stuck on the side of the track wondering what went wrong when one blows. The Nexus R5 gives you a full set of diagnostics that you can tell which circuit is going into overcurrent 
by how much, for how long, and also you get to choose what to do when the fuse is tripped. You can program a delay time before reinstating the circuit, how many times you attempt to reinstate the circuit, and you can be alerted exactly which circuit is the problem. All of the 25 amp high current outputs have a soft start feature that limits current drawn by the connected device when it first powers up. This can be really useful for fans and pumps that draw a lot of current on startup. The Nexus R5 has four 25 amp high current outputs and 12 8 amp outputs. Something else that's new on the Nexus R5 VCU is the ability to password protect only certain areas of the setup. Now if you go here into setup, password protection, you're given the option to protect the whole map or just certain parts. The Nexus R5 also has a full data logging capability, so you can log and review any channel in the ECU at rates of up to 1,000 samples a second. You can bring up to 300 channels into the data logger at once, and there's 512 megabyte of memory on board. Truthfully, that was really just a primer of the NSP software and what it can do. We will be making more in-depth tutorials on how to set up and use many of the new functions in the Nexus ECUs. But for now, that's all we have time for. Wait, there is one thing that hasn't changed. Page up for power, baby! I'll see you next time.